This is the follow-up on one of my previous videos where I mixed a 10900K with a 4090 and I had a huge CPU bottleneck. So now I swapped the 10900K with the 3900K. So let's check out the benchmarks. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, being an older title, it doesn't support DLSS or ray tracing. So nothing fancy here, just poor rasterization. Looking at the bar chart, we can see an improvement on both 1% lows and average FPS of 25 and 28%. Even when looking at the generated benchmark graphs, we can see that the latency has improved for both GPU and CPU from 10 to 7, making for a smoother, stutter-free gameplay. But that's for an older game. Let's check out Cyberpunk 2077 next.
For Cyberpunk 2077, we have a mix of settings from having everything turned off to everything turned on. Having DLSS off, ray tracing off and frame gen off, we still see some big improvement in the 1% lows. Now turning on just DLSS, we get a huge boost in 1% low FPS, a whopping 61% improvement. Leaving DLSS on and turning on ray tracing, mind you, no path ray tracing, just ultra. Both 1% lows and average FPS take a hit, but overall the 3900K is still better for both 1% lows and averages. Adding frame gen on top of that makes the game more laggy with the introduced latency, but 3900K is still on top with almost 25% for both 1% lows and average FPS. I am quite surprised that Cyberpunk being a CPU intensive game, we still get some really big improvements on 1% lows by just swapping the CPU from 10900K to 3900K, making the game feel smoother without stutters. Now let's move on to Hogwarts Legacy gameplay, more specific Hogsmeade area where the benchmark takes place. Hogwarts Legacy, it's a pretty interesting game since it's mostly GPU bound, but if we move to the Hogsmeade area, it's pretty taxing on the CPU, like by a lot. So I guess it's the perfect area for comparing CPUs. I won't go in much detail looking at the graphs since the video is already unnecessarily long. Just gonna look at the averages at the 1% lows this time around. If you look at the averages, we can see that they're between 30 and 50% and surprisingly the 1% lows didn't change that much. So only a couple of percent of improvements. The only big difference is when turning everything on, 
like the DLSS. Oh, I, I did make a mistake. So I forgot to turn on RTX in the last graph. So I, we only have DLSS on and frame gen on. I mean, even using frame gen, it's kind of wonky. We lost a bunch of 1% low improvements there. So basically no improvements in the 1% lows and 80% in average FPS, which is a lot. But yeah, who actually uses frame gen, right? It's pretty wonky almost all the time and introducing the latency, it makes the game even worse. Yeah, let's move on to Red Dead Redemption 2. On Red Dead Redemption 2, I don't really know what happened with the 13900K. We get an improvement of average FPS between 20 and 26, but the 1% lows are getting destroyed. Even when we have everything turned off, like DLSS, RTX and frame gen, we get minus 30% FPS on the 1% lows, and even if we turn on DLSS, we get a minus 91% improvement on the 1% lows. So it beats me. 
I don't know what happened. Maybe the latency on the RAM. Maybe the, there was a big spike somewhere when trying to render a couple of frames. Anyway, let's move on to the last game, Witcher 3. There's a lot to unpack here, but first I need to come clean with something. There might have been an update on how DLSS is implemented in The Witcher 3 after I swapped the 10900K with the 3900K, so the results are what they are. The 1% low improvements are pretty modest across all the settings, but looking at the average FPS improvements, wowza, almost double the FPS even with RTX on. And I guess frame gen does something in this game, it's actually not that bad, it's playable. Well, that's it. Hopefully you like the vid and you learned something, not that anyone wants to buy a 3900k ever again.